Muito obrigado, Gilberto, pela introdução. Bom dia, senhoras e senhores. É uma honra estar aqui com vocês e agradeço ao Telebrasil pela oportunidade de apresentar os serviços convergentes da BT. Então, I'm going to talk to you in English um, to deliver this presentation. I'd like to give you a very good summary of BT's products and services in converged space. Give you a summary of the BT's converged products and services and our experience in that space. And I'm going to focus on BT Vision, which is our IPTV uh, product offering. And I'll finally close with some final thoughts for you and some closing statements uh, regarding our key experiences in IPTV. Uh, BT's decision to demerge from O2, our mobile arm, in 2001 marked a key new area for us in that we needed to innovate to remain competitive. So our portfolio needed to look at the convergence space and leveraging the technologies themselves that would make it easier for the customer. Communications industry is no longer about voice-centric products and services. It's increasingly about bringing and merging the wireless with the wired and making sure that the multimedia living room, home environments, and your office environments are available from anywhere. Bringing it all together means that these environments can, um, can be made available wherever you are. Uh, and in doing so, the need to deliver a continuous innovation to grow your portfolio of services remains a key objective for us. It's what you need to keep competitive. So, the uh, convergent story is compelling for us. That vision is very compelling. Products and services need to be delivered, designed, and implemented to, um, so that they are location and access agnostic, and the ability to deliver content, data, and communications at home, around cities and towns, in the home or office environments and wherever you are, from airports to, um, to conventions such as these. But there isn't a single solution out there that fits every customer. Uh, what is important is that um, service providers have to reuse their underlying infrastructure and the common components. And those components need to be made right first time. Because if you don't, if your provider gets the infrastructure wrong and if you get the common capabilities wrong, Every single new product launch is going to create problems. You're going to get that wrong, and that is costly. That's, that is why BT places a wireless broadband platform, uh, BT Total Broadband, at the heart of our convergence story. Convergence, convergence needs to happen at three levels. Um, firstly, the networks. Our networks is composed of partners and owned, owned infrastructure um, and deliver an access agnostic platform. That means that both wired and wireless access technologies can be supported. Secondly, the applications need to be designed and implemented in such a way that it's reusing components that are familiar to the users. This simplifies product launch and reduces cost. These components include subscription management, for example, how you register to the service, how you authenticate, for example, username and password, and the look and feel, i.e. the graphical user interface. Other components include security, storage, and others. Thirdly, the range of devices available to customers today is growing. So for BT and for other converged providers, it's no longer about the desktop PC at home. It's increasingly about laptops, PDAs, game consoles, and consumer electronic devices. What we mustn't forget, however, is that the customer is at the center of this convergent story. The customer must be made to feel that he is the king. I'm going to talk about uh, eight different products and services from BT in, in general terms and then focus heavily on BT Vision. Our convergent story st starts with BT Total Broadband. This delivers a global package of services including inclusive Wi-Fi minutes, off-allowance services, i.e. those services which don't eat into your download um, monthly allowance, global services with partners together with BT OpenZone. With that infrastructure in place, we're able to deliver value-added services portfolios, which you've seen before. Uh, these eight products and BT Vision themselves are all delivered using the shared infrastructure. BT Broadband delivers on three levels. There is a private network, a very secure environment for you in the home. Nobody else can get access to it, and you have the bandwidth that you require. 
uh, it is quality assured for those services such as I IPTV that are uh, real-time and delay sensitive. And finally, we have a public um, slice of that network so that the third party can gain access to all of our footprint of Wi-Fi accesses out there. So BT, BT Fusion was the start for us. Essentially, this is a dual mode DSM Wi-Fi handset um, and is able to deliver the same feature set whether you use the GSM cellular uh, capability or whether you use Wi-Fi. It basically delivers cost savings and a wider coverage than the cellular only product would give. Fusion is bundled with our fixed line tariff and that is key to our customers. As well as inclusive minutes for the cellular access, it provides unlimited calls to UK mobile uh, and UK landlines made through any of the Wi-Fi footprints in BT and partner networks. BT OpenZone is our wireless broadband platform. It provides wireless internet access throughout the UK and around the world in public hotspots. We have over 35,000 hotspots globally and VEX uh, in Brazil is one of our uh, partners. BT OpenZone also provides a platform for our BT Wireless Cities, BT Form services, i.e. the billing, the authentication and the customer services are all shared. In addition to 2,000 BT OpenZone wireless broadband hotspots in the UK, the BT Wireless Cities uh, service offers a more extensive Wi-Fi coverage across 13 UK cities, including Westminster, which is a central part of London, Newcastle and Birmingham. But Wireless Cities is more than just a network access offering. Its value add is on delivering community and social services such as traffic congestion and CCTV monitoring. Tourist information services and support to frontline staff of the local council, like the local government, going about doing their daily jobs. BT Office Anywhere is a product that basically delivers remote and flexible working applications, and this is, this is the device that Office Anywhere runs on. Uh, primarily, it's a corporate and uh, small to medium enterprises offering. Office Anywhere is based on Microsoft Windows Mobile 6 platform and a Wi-Fi enabled devices. It provides real-time access to emails, to contacts, and to calendar, and that can be done through the Wi-Fi or cellular access means. Further, it allows unlimited voice over IP calls to UK landlines through BT's Wi-Fi um, infrastructure. BT2Go has recently been launched. It's, it's the consumer offering of uh, Office Anywhere. So those are the some of the reusable components that we, um, we use in BT. The way that the product looks is very familiar to the customer. The way that they re, uh, register the, for the service is ubiquitous. So we're now bringing this to the consumer space. And reusable components uh, used in Office Anywhere include the secure activation of the service, the look and feel, and the connection management. And it starts from about five pounds per month. Uh, BT Phone is essentially a Wi-Fi sharing proposition. The basic idea is to provide wider Wi-Fi coverage in the UK by giving something to the users in return for access to their, um, to their home hubs, to their access points. There are two concepts of users in BT Phone, the Linus user and the bill user. And essentially, Linus users enjoy free access to other BT uh, Phone hotspots, access points, in exchange for allowing others to use his or hers access point. And bill users essentially get some revenue from those accessing um, their access points. However, in return, bill users, when they go out, they have to pay for access to other phone um, hotspots. Now, we believe that this concept will create hundreds of thousands of Wi-Fi hotspots around the world um, so that it, it essentially becomes ubiquitous access. Within the UK itself, we estimate that around 10% conversion between BT broadband products and phone will allow um, um, seamless coverage in the UK. Go Messenger is a, is a unique 21st century staying in touch proposition from BT for the younger generation. It doesn't, it doesn't exclude the older ones of us, but it's particularly aimed at the youth market. Go Messenger delivers web browsing, instant messaging, voice over IP calls, video calling, and, uh, and games such as Squake. And again, Access is available through any of BT's total broadband uh, Wi-Fi access and to, uh, through public Wi-Fi. Uh, it's standard PSPs, standard hardware uh, that can be enhanced to use the service for a simple secure download and registration. 
Finally, we have BT Mobile Express. I think you've noticed that everything in BT is called BT. So it's BTX, BTY, and BTZ. It's a connection management offering. It provides global remote access service primarily for organizations who want to implement a flexible working policy. It enables mobile workers to securely connect to their corporate LAN using the most appropriate access technology. So it can be Wi-Fi, GPRS, HSDPA, or Ethernet. And it does so automatically. It's important as uh, different access mechanisms and converged products come to, to, to place that the service provider and the user have a level of control over uh, which is the most appropriate access network in terms of costs, in terms of quality, and the user preferences. So now to BT Vision. We take a look at the market back in 2006 when BT was looking to, uh, to launch our IP TV product. Back then, we had around 7.7 uh, .7 million households in the UK, and the market was growing at 10%. Penetration was increasing, and uh, the digital switchover between 2008 and 2012 in the UK uh, presented with, uh, a, a good opportunity for us to enter the market. Um, importantly, the uh, broad BT by now had national coverage uh, of the UK for broadband, and BT Retail, our consumer arm, had 34% of the market share. One key point for IPTV was the speed, the download speed of 2 megabits per second. We'd, we'd achieved 87% coverage in the UK. So that meant we could enter the market with a service that could um, be um, guaranteed uh, delivery. But it wasn't imp it, that wasn't enough. We needed that unique offering. We knew that distinctiveness was a key driver for market growth. And at the time, nobody could compete with uh, the offerings that um, BT Vision was, uh, was going to deliver. That was key to us. So looking at the business case for BT Vision, <coughs> uh, Sky and the cable operators had the market share of the, of the market itself. They'd invested uh, heavily in content. To enter the market, BT would have to set up new partnerships um, with content providers. And this, this was a completely new area to us. Uh, so our vision had to be compelling. The question we had was how to place BT Vision. So normally speaking, the dotted lines there represent the, the sweet spot. So when a new player comes to market, they try and put their service within that corridor. Um, higher end services would, would um, incur a higher fee and perhaps provide some uh, higher features. The lower end services would have a, be less uh, feature rich, but would be less costs. Uh, the decision was made that BT really had to, to uh, play into the pay TV market. We knew from market research that choice and conven convenience were fundamental drivers for pay TV adoption. And for IPTV, this was more so because of the limitations on bandwidth and the technology itself is still maturing. We also had to compete with DVD rental companies. If we priced the pay per vision too highly, customers would simply just go down the road and buy DVDs. Uh, and we wouldn't have an offering. So we decided to go in the pay-as-you-go market. But we also knew that customers, as, as they started to use the service, would demand savings, would demand volume discounts. So we decided that we were also going to provide value-added packages to allow the customer to enjoy more of the content that they wanted without necessarily paying too high a premium. Our prime target of those customers was subscription resistant. In essence, this generated a new product offering. Uh, i.e. those consumers who had previously rejected IPTV as a pay item. Um, so it was key to us to summarize, um, to be very distinct with the product offering. What we were doing was to provide pay TV resistant customers with a very low commitment offering. In our case, it was actually zero commitment. The customer could get the service and then use as they felt like it. We were going to compete on all areas uh, with the exception of additional channels, and initially, we were not competing on premium live sports contents. Taking a look at the history of IPTV and BT, um, I was involved in 1993 with our first offering, which was called BT Interactive. That was a, a lower quality video on demand service coupled with a games download proposition. That was done with Nintendo. Um, but um, due to some technology, regulatory, and commercial reasons, that initiative didn't go any further. Moving on to 2000, BT Open World first 
um, delivered 10 times the speed um, uh, broadband. As I said before, the, the, uh, the merger with O2 was a key turning point for BT, and our CEO, Ben Vivian, after joining us in 2002, decided to take a number of actions to speed the adoption of broadband. Firstly, the consumer offering was reduced uh, by almost uh, uh, 15 pounds. Secondly, and very importantly, the wholesale offering for broadband was reduced remarkably at 50 nearly 50% uh, 50 of the consumer market. That meant that new entrants could come and buy wholesale broadband from BT, thus further motivating the market. Uh, and finally, uh, Mr. Vivian set some real targets. We were to achieve one million customers by 2003, and we did that. Uh, we also additionally very quickly realized that um, with the broadband infrastructure we were placing out there, we could achieve two megabit, the magical two megabits per second guaranteed quality of service delivery. Uh, and at that point, uh, our heads turned towards providing a bundled service which would give digital video broadcasting on one side, coupled with a bundled broadband package for IPTV. And so the initial studies and initial trials went on for the next year or so, until in 2004, when BT had around 4.1 million broadband customers, we began to write the business case to, de to deploy the service itself. By the end of 2005, we'd had 1,000 customers on the platform, and we'd selected our vendors. The key suppliers to BT are Microsoft for the IPTV platform and uh, Philips for the set-top box. By then, we had 6 million customers on board. Uh, the market will say that the launch of, IPT, of uh, BT Vision was, around, uh, was in December 2006, but that was a soft launch. It was really 2007 um, when we did a mass launch of the service. And the clock is uh, hiding in there. During the year of 2007, we added a number of things. Firstly, the self-install was a key thing for BT. That meant that our engineers no longer had to go to the customer's uh, premises to install IPTV, to install BT Vision. Customers could receive something through the post and install it themselves. Our marketing campaign started through email and later through a monthly magazine. And quite importantly, we, we made the deal with Setanta Sports for live coverage of key events. We now have around, two, oh, just over a year, we have 250,000 customers for BT Vision. And that represents 50% of the market in the UK we are the fastest growing IPTV supplier. Um, uh, as you can see, the broadband retail rates keep coming down. And we're now engaging uh, new customers of, at the rate of one line every 10 seconds. So what does it look like? Essentially, it's a set-top box. The set-top box there is called the V-Box, as in BT Vision. It plugs into the home hub, it plugs into the television, and it plugs into the, uh, into the aerial for Freeview, for digital uh, terrestrial broadcast television. The BT network can deliver guaranteed 1.6 megabits per second um, for, the, for the video service itself, for the video on demand. And Vision has a, distributed, has a distributed content distribution and delivery network which operates from 10 sites in the UK. These are co-located with other existing points and presence to reduce operational costs. Number of key points here, there's a wide range of content from films to uh, TV programs, kids programs, sports, music, uh, replay. Um, connection at the moment is 30 pounds. The uh, box itself, the Freeview box, is currently free of charge, but that could change. And the uh, personal recorder has a capacity of 80 hours recording where you can pause and rewind TV. And importantly, that box is already high definition ready, so we're, we're poised to enter that market when it develops. Uh, by comparison, the competitors to, to BT Vision, a plain free view box without the PVR, without the recording facility, is around 20 pounds, which is uh, about 70 highs. And, uh, and a, a matching PVR able to record 80 hours is around 174 pounds, uh, which is getting on for 500 odd um, hey eyes. So at launch, we had a menu system that was semi-transparent, so customers could continue to see the video and listen to the audio whilst they play with the menu. The extended program guide in VT um, is downloaded through the internet and can provide program information up to 14 days in advance. Uh, from day one, 
we had, um, we had uh, a, a wide choice of, uh, of products, in particular for uh, film blockbusters, and our ability to introduce new blockbusters now is greatly enhanced. Bear in mind that films is the key driver for pay TV. This is really important. We also provided access to the BT telephone directory. From there, the customer could type in a name, a first name and a surname, find the customer they want to call, and then essentially click to dial. Press a button, and the network would call the customer's telephone, and upon answering, the network would make the connection to the other end. Okay, we have a portal uh, for, BT, uh, for BT Vision that basically gives details of uh, programming coming up. Um, and new additions and, and events. So, for example, uh, if we were to look at the BT Vision portal today, you should see some information regarding the Euro 2008 football competition. The portal also provides a downloadable software client for the PC. This allows users to download free and payable content for offline playback. Flexibility in the pricing is key to us. As you can see, the pay-per-view starts from around 29p and goes up to about... 29p is about um, 80, 80 cents and goes to about four pounds for the blockbuster films, which is around 12, 13 highs. And the users can mix and match. There's no contract. The customer is not tied in. From a month-to-month -month basis, the customer can select any one of those packages. Further, they can bundle the, the packages up and come to the next month, you might decide that football, football and other sports is no longer of interest so you can mix and match and change. There are no penalties, there are no hidden costs. One, one of the key features for BT Vision is that we have the rights for near live premiership. So all of those games that Sky and the cable TVs are not going to broadcast, we have the rights to encode, we take the uh, content off air, we encode it, we put it into the BT Vision network and from 10 o'clock in the evening, those games can be made available. Uh, currently, uh, BT Vision has around 8,000 programs and 4,700 4, hours of content available from about 80 different providers. Put it another way, that's about 52 games of football. So the BT Vision value chain, in essence, we have two revenue streams. We have the broadband stream, and it's important to highlight that because there is an upside. We found that between 20 to 30 percent additional sales of broadband were possible through uh, BT Vision. And then we have the BT Vision uh, subscriptions themselves, uh, either for um, uh, the BT Vision uh, revenue. That can come from the sale of the set box, set -up box itself, which today is free, through subscriptions, through pay-per-view, and through games. On the cost sides, we have customer acquisition costs, the, uh, the license rights for Microsoft software, the digital rights management for the content, and the cost of the set-top box itself. We have the usage costs, operational costs for the support, uh, technical support, for the customer center, for storage and content distribution. We have the network, which is provided to us by BT Wholesale. And importantly, we have a number of content um, uh, deals with uh, revenue shares, upfront volumes, fixed all-you-can-eat type content uh, deals with about 80 providers. I'm going to leave you some final thoughts now. So if we look back at 2006 when uh, BT started to launch this, the IPTV market was just beginning to take off in Europe and in particular the UK. Uh, a year on, we now have 250,000 customers. So it's looking like a, a rapid development for us and we managed to enter the market at the right time. In comparison, if you believe the figures of the uh, analysts, the, the forecast for Latin America is very small in comparison. So if we were to try and extrapolate the experience in Europe with uh, Latin America, it's likely to be 2010 and beyond before um, IPTV is ready for mass take-up. But there are some interesting new revenue earning opportunities to consider with converged services when telco, when telecoms companies meet the web. To us, any new IPTV deployment must seriously consider what next, i.e. don't think about deploying IPTV on its own right, not as a vertical solution. For example, multimedia communication services such as Scholar Display, when the telephone number and the name of the person is displayed on, um, onto a TV for an incoming call, uh, the telephone directory which is showed, and, and the click-to-dial services. 
the ability to separate media streams, i.e. to separate the video, as you can see now, um, to the voice is a, is a value add. You're unlikely to make extra money, but it's something that provides the customer with, uh, with an additional feature set, and it may well keep that customer on your books. That's something else to consider. What you see here is a, a um, advertised-based revenue. In essence, the service provider or a customer for the service provider, such as a bank or a restaurant or, or, or a convention such as this, provides content uh, to be delivered to users. They may also subsidize or provide for free the multimedia devices. Uh, it's important to think about that of at least two. If you have one device, who are you going to call? You need two so that at least you have uh, two or more so that at least you have uh, the means of communicating with somebody on the same level. In essence, when the user picks up the telephone and dials, for example, a restaurant or a retailer, a, a shop, a 15 to 30 second advert is played in front of the user, which is the content relevant to the call being made. So if you found a restaurant, you could expect to see a video of the restaurant showing what it looks like. If you found a, a, a retailer, you could, for instance, see what the offer of the day is. What does the user get for this? Well, actually, the user gets a richer uh, set of communications. They're, they're able to have more information than they would have done through a simple voice-centric product. Further, there's the ability to, um, to make this interactive. So in the example of a, of a restaurant menu, you could actually see the menu of the day, and you could online, uh, through, through a, a device in your front room, rather than upstairs, you can make a reservation. You could actually order things through the telephone in your front room, rather than having to go upstairs, switch the computer on, see if somebody else is online before you can make a telephone call. Um, the, the, the ability of having an intelligent set-top box in the customer's living room that is more than IPTV could open up new opportunities. For example, the download market. So that same set-top box could download music and videos to put on a memory card, and then the customer could take that memory card They've paid for the content, but they can now take that content with them. It doesn't have the experience that we've had so far. So convergence offers new opportunities. It's already happening at three levels. Customers need ease of use, but they don't want to be tied in for long periods of time. They don't want to be paying subscriptions. However, they deserve the right to pay subscriptions. If they enjoy the service and they want to use more of it, you sh we should be able to provide them with volume discounts. So different models of purchasing are key. Remember, the hybrid IPTV market that BT Vision is, um, is fulfilling was opened up. And that market didn't exist before. So these customers would have previously rejected IPTV and now more than happy to use it because it gives them something that they want. Think about the total package. Do not deploy vertical solutions out there. So you need to think about what next. If I have this in the network, what else can I do with it? And you need to think about the distinction um, be very clear about the distinctions of things that are enablers, for example. Access networks and the reusable components are enablers. They don't make you revenue. Uh, you need to think about the giveaways for market presentation, for example. Inclusive minutes or free set top boxes. And you also need to think about what the real revenue earning opportunities are. In this case, film and other content. Standards play a very important part in this because the dis you need to make the right solution. The decision you take now is going to affect your ability to keep your costs down instead of being locked into a single supplier. Standards allow you the ability to deliver new services from different suppliers at a faster pace. So if for some reason your supplier has run out of steam or is trying to charge you too much, you can go somewhere else. So think about that carefully. And a key message from the BT Vision team is that content acquisition and processing is a very specialist area which requires very specialist resourcing. BT has taken on a big team of media industry specialists in the programming, in the content acquisition, on air promotions, marketing, and other areas. Getting the right people to make this happen is absolutely vital. And lastly, make sure that that team understands the playing field of what is possible to deliver and what isn't possible to deliver for IPTV. In our case, we're limited in some of the broadcasting for, for live sports. We, we, uh, there are big content uh, owners out there, Sky TV and the, and the cable operators, and currently um, we, we're not allowed to, um, to display the same content because they've already paid for it. But one key message is don't try and second guess what the customer is going to want to pay for. You don't know. 
Uh, so get on with it, adapt, and be ready to change when the customer and the usage changes. Thank you for listening. Muito obrigado.